Greetings and good day. This is Barry Samuel of Inside Out Health and Wellness. Uh, this is the Inside Out podcast. Welcome everyone. Uh, it's been a little while since uh, last we spoke, so it's a, a pleasure and a, an honor once again to be coming to you. And with me today on uh, our, our topic of holistic nutrition and health and wellness is the very wonderful Allison Key, who is a holistic nutritionist. Welcome, Allison. Hi, Barry. Thanks for having me here with you. <laughs> Great to be with you. Um, we've, uh, you know, discussed health and wellness, of course, recently as, as, you know, practitioners and just general casual conversation. Um, and, um, you know, when we're talking to people every day, you know, invariably there's different questions about how can I manage my lifestyle? How can I be my best inside out? How can I become the best version of myself? How can I claim back some of my personal power and some control? Um, what in your experience uh, have you found have been some of the common themes that people seek out as, as a goal, as, as, as a want to try to improve their health? Uh, I think one of the biggest things is always people trying fad diets and them not working. People wanting a better nutrition and a, a better routine and not eating properly and wanting some, some guidance along the way. Um, everyone has different stress in their life. Everyone has different routines. Uh, some people, you know, could be a stay-at-home mom or dad or could be someone busy in the workforce, not having enough time. Um, could be highly stressed, could be emotionally eating. You know, people have many different reasons, but what it all comes down to is not eating properly and not looking after themselves. And we all have triggers and we have our vices and addictions and yes. uh, we have our comfort foods <laughs> and we're good at being in denial too um, i think we have uh, achieved a uh, master guru status of uh the degree in denial um and and we all have some form of addiction would you not agree i would agree with that um, and not only some form of addiction and denial, but we always think that we can just start tomorrow. So we don't actually take a firm of it today. We're like, oh, well, I'll start eating healthy tomorrow. And then tomorrow comes and we put it off again. Mm -hmm. And then the next day comes and the next thing we know, it's been another week and we, mm -hmm. we haven't even started. Right. And then it's like we have an awakening. Uh, we have a major life event that happens. And I'm not talking about a wedding or celebrating <laughs> a child's big birthday, but maybe it's a, a, a cardiac event or uh, you discover that you're, you're you know, you know, clinically high uh, blood glucose levels and now are a type 2 diabetic. Yeah. Uh, have high cholesterol, have any numerous health issues that can can happen when you're not controlling yeah diet. we get you know uh, blind seemingly blindsided by mm -hmm. this but you know in fairness uh, on balance like a lot of the times these are things that are a little bit within our control and so I think um, if we can try to inspire people to just think about some possibilities that could could help themselves um uh you know uh that would be kind of a magical thing for us is that uh you know we're here just trying to be messengers mm -hmm. not saying that we have the solution for everything but certainly create the dialogue and the conversation no exactly and i mean uh for me personally that's what that's what changed for for my mentality so about a year and a half almost two years ago um i actually had a, a major health scare. Um, I had something that happened that at my age, I, I never even thought was, was possible. Um, so I ended up um, being unwell and not understanding why, uh, getting some tests done and realizing uh, that I could possibly have colon cancer. Um, I had polyps that were developing and I had to have two surgeries for it. Uh, so I am very fortunate and I am cancer free and I Amen. am hoping to stay that way. Um, but it really changed the way that I looked at 
my health, my, my fitness, but also my mentality towards it. So growing up, I had, you know, I was in sports and I was in dance and, you know, later in years, I kind of always um, battled a little bit with my weight and with my, my health. Um, I was always active, but I didn't always eat properly. I, you know, I would, exactly like you said, I would eat because of my emotions or I had certain comfort foods that I liked having all the time. Um, and then something happens and you think that you're going to be just fine and fortunately for me I was but that's not always the case and that's not the story for every person and so it really made me take a look at my life and my goals and at 30 years old I didn't want to be having cancer and I didn't want to be having to deal with that so I realized that I needed to take control of my own health um, so for me, the first thing that I wanted to do, and I already have a bit of a medical background, for me was to educate myself. So rather than being the person that I was and with the medical background that I had, I wanted to kind of understand how we can prevent disease, how we can prevent certain illnesses, how we can become the better version of ourselves in terms of our health um, so that we can really take control of that again. Uh, which is why I went back to school uh, to become a nutritionist um, mm -hmm. and really have completely changed my life since. So, you know, two years ago, I had higher blood glucose than I do now. I've lowered my levels. I've um, I had really low iron. Now I do not. I was borderline anemic before. I don't even have to take supplements for iron deficiency. Um, I've lost close to 35 pounds in the last two years um, really all because of changing my habits changing the habits that weren't good for me before mm -hmm. well that's a remarkable story and uh, you know certainly highly highly inspirational um, what kind of a, a look do you get from when you know you talk to people like me and this is like only the second time that I'm hearing a version of this and you know uh, people that you're supporting and you're guiding and when you tell them about what you've been through that colon cancer I is think, something that you've survived through I think a lot of the times people are, are surprised because um, from from outside I look like a perfectly healthy young adult you would never think without knowing that I would have ever gone through something like this. Um, I am very young to have even had it. Um, unfortunately, we have a little bit of it that runs in our family. Um, but people are people are are, are very surprised. Um, people are also very very inspired by the fact that rather than you know getting depressed or upset or kind of feeding into the fact that I could have had this and it could have gone a different way. That I took a different direction and I took control of my life and I took control of my health and every day I work towards being a better version versus falling into the trap and you know we have our own narrative when when we're alone with ourselves and, and we're honest sometimes we go to a dark place sometimes mm -hmm. we try to give ourselves a little pep talk yeah. And these are the difficult real moments that we mm -hmm. have with ourselves that, you know, most of us can't even imagine what those conversation, what that yeah. conversation looked like for you oh. within yourself oh, inside out. I mean, I definitely had moments where I called my best friend like just in tears because I, I couldn't believe what was happening and what if I actually had it and waiting for test results to come back and just not knowing where things were going to go. And you know it's it's easy to to stay in that mentality but at the same time I mean at the end of the day I was 32 years old so in my heart I knew that that wasn't gonna be the end of my story so it was changing that mentality and saying well you know what worst case scenario if I do how do I help myself prolong it how do I how do I become the kind of person that survives this mm -hmm. or you know and being the healthiest version of myself and putting the right things into my body and giving myself the exercise that I need and the nutrients that I need so that if I if the diagnosis came back that I had cancer, how could I best support my body to fight it? 
So I went through all of those emotions. And at the end of the day, I decided that, you know, like I said, it, well, that wasn't going to be the end of my story. If you could, uh, in terms of timelines, so you, you uh, everything appears like a normal young adult mm -hmm. person on the outside, uh, on the surface. Uh, you, you, you said you started to feel a little bit off uh, yeah, and before I mean, you were diagnosed. And I mean, for, for me, um, based on the size of the polyp they removed, they actually said that I'd been growing it for probably 10 to 15 years. Um, so I went 10 to 15 years without even knowing that something something could be wrong um, And for that that it's hard you like there's only so many things that you can catch that are going on inside your body You honestly never know. I mean Had I thought back when I was 20 years old that it could have been a possibility would I have done things differently? maybe um, but the point is is that I started having some health issues I started having some problems and it was a matter of months before before I was having my first surgery to have the the polyps removed and to get the testing done and to go for a follow-up procedure it all happened so quick that you don't even have a chance to almost mentally grasp it before you, it's it's mm. over and what's the period of time between when you had found out about it and then the the, the, the treatment and the procedures how six months from start to finish it it went quick so you know you 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 kind of have to make your decision right away whether or not this is going to be your story or whether or not you're going to do something else for yourself you don't really have time you i mean yeah. it, it kind of comes all at once and you have to decide yeah, a dear friend of mine uh, has been uh, affected by um an adrenal uh, mm -hmm. tumor um, and just had to go in for a procedure as well and he, I think his narrative was uh, pretty similar in the sense mm -hmm. that you know I've got to be proactive about this yep um, so I suppose in a way well and that's exactly yeah. what it is for me because I have a family history it's not to right. say that I'm not going to start growing another tumor or polyp. It's not going to say that the next time that there is one, that it's not going to be cancer. It's, there's, there's, I don't have any guarantees. The only guarantee that I can give myself is that in 10 years, in 15 years, in 30 years, if that day comes, I'm going to give my body all the tools that it needs. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to start doing that today. Beautiful beautiful that's that's remarkable uh like i feel inspired again just li you know listening to you to art articulate that part of it for sure and being resilient and it it kind of fortifies it it, it strengthens you and, and you realize that you know what we're not assured of being here next week nope. none of us are and, and we know that as much as we seek out control uh, and, and you know, and, and when we talk about inside out and becoming the best version of yourself, reclaiming your power and getting your control back, uh, you know, there is really in reality, you know, so much that we can control and there mm -hmm. is a lot, uh, but not everything. And I guess in your case, Allison, it's like, um, you know, this, you're one of the, you know, the small percentage, I guess, at your age. Mm -hmm. That they would discover in your colon a large polyp mm -hmm. uh, that was malignant and uh and there are blessings that that that, that happen that, that comes there there's there's a good side of it i guess in yeah. the sense that you're here you're um you seem you know determined and you're helping mm -hmm. people as now you know practicing as a holistic nutritionist and helping people with their habits and their lifestyle and saying you know look what i've overcome mm -hmm. you know and you're I mean, you're a busy person who's stressed <laughs> out uh but things could also be you know different too there are yep. you know other ways to look at why life is hard well and i mean people don't people don't realize how that stress affects them people don't realize how that busy schedule affects them and i mean there, there are so many little things that you can that you can do or change that are just tiny adjustments in your habit that really can change your 
your physical well-being, but also your mental well-being and that, that emotions. Um, so I think for me, being able to learn about that, being able to bring it into my everyday life and also inspire to bring it into someone else's life uh, is the reason why I've, I've chosen to do this. Uh, yeah, and we all need we all need purpose and commitment, and mm -hmm. certainly you've you found yours uh, in in your personal story and relating that to your purpose every day now, yep. I guess, and that's a pretty miraculous mm -hmm. thing in a sense. I to... mean, you talk about control, and it's like we can't gonna we can't control what's gonna happen to us tomorrow, but we can control what we do with ourselves today. We can control what we put into our bodies. We can control how we behave with our bodies, the activity that we do with it, in, in order to set ourselves up for the best possible outcome. Absolutely. So going back to our timelines, so mm -hmm. six months after your procedure, you're, you're starting to feel better? Um, what happens? To then? be perfectly honest with you, right after the procedures, I felt better. Um, I was asymptomatic within within days. Um, I, like I said, I'm extremely fortunate and I, you know, I still dealt with, I, um, because of some, some bleeding that I had, I still dealt with very low iron levels. So I had fatigue, uh, other things like that. Um, but I, I, I took control of it right away. So I thought to myself, you know, I don't want to have a blood transfusion. I don't want my iron levels to be this low. I don't want to have have to be feeling this way so it was a diet change right away for me it was okay how do I get this up how do I do this and I'm I've never been one that believes in in taking a lot of medication or or things like that so I wanted to figure out how I could give my body what it needed from my diet and did the doctors tell you what stage cancer it was like how far along uh, minimal it was yeah it was it very was very beginning yes yes on. yes, so yes. That's, that's amazing yes um, what, uh, I guess two things I want to ask you about, uh, as, as final pieces to this, uh, powerful story is, um, symptoms and sociologically what you noticed within the hospital, other people, other cancer patients, I guess, uh, well, let's start with, well, you said you didn't have many. I didn't have, I didn't have, I didn't really have any symptoms. Um, you know, I I lived a very I lived a very busy lifestyle. I had a very <laughs> busy job, and I had uh, a good social life. So I was constantly active and constantly doing things. Um, I kind of started working out a little more. So for me, when I started to get symptoms, I actually didn't know whether if it was just related to a change that I had made in my life for being super busy, or if it was actually something else. What were some of the um, symptoms? Internal bleeding. Uh, so Why? I had I had different bleeding than I had and that's when I really started to take notice of eh, You know what this is kind of going on for a week two weeks and although it's minimal it doesn't seem right mm -hmm. um, So it's going into my doctor getting blood work done uh, Going for different scopes and then determining that there mm -hmm. there was something mm -hmm. um, But otherwise and like I said once once the polyps were removed um, My symptoms were pretty much were pretty much gone um, because of the way that the polyp was and because of the growth it was um, I had it removed we went back for a second procedure just to make sure that absolutely every cell that was related to it was gone um, and like I said I was very fortunate I there's there was no other treatments that I needed to do because of the the type of, of polyp that I had um, so I, I didn't I didn't have to go through the experiences like a lot of people do. There was no, there was no further treatments. There mm -hmm. was no, there was no chemo. There was no radiation. Mm -hmm. There was nothing else that that I had to do for myself. There was a list of things um, diet wise that they automatically just kind of tell people to do. Um, and then for me, it's it's maintenance and follow up. So every few years, I have to go back and get the same sort of procedure right. uh, mm -hmm. done again. Um, but in the meantime, it's, it's, it's me controlling my lifestyle, controlling my diet, knowing the things that could possibly affect the growth of another one versus not eating, eating those items, you know, red meat, 
um, different types of beans, different different things that, that really can increase those risks. Um, different types of beans? Yeah, there's a couple of different ones that there was like a, there was a list, but I couldn't tell you offhand which ones okay. because I don't eat beans, so that's uh, a little surprising <laughs> yeah. here. Actually, there was there was a whole there was a whole list of foods that they actually that they actually gave me to uh, to avoid. Uh, red meat being number one, any kind of salamis, prosciuttos, uh, anything like that, anything that's high in nitrate or nitrite is a no go. Mm -hmm. So any kind of food that contains that, uh, avoid. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, it's just the, yeah. the kind of legumes and the, yep. the beans, uh, I would have thought. So Fibrous, anything, you know, to that'd be good for colon health. It's good to it, it's good to clean. Yeah. Yeah, as like a cleansing tool. Okay. Um, there's different. I mean, if you want to get into more specifics, there's different. There's different types of fibrous. Even sure. Even soluble, you know. Soluble. Yes, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, but yeah, no, they gave me a list of, of things to uh, to watch out for my diet and, and to minimize, and I've done those things, but I mean, I also take it further into different things that are going to, you know, support my immune system, different things that are going to support my general health. Um, so if anything were to ever come back or if anything were to ever happen, that I've given my body its best chance. Mm -hmm. um, did you have, and, and I guess the second half of my my question around or, or curiosity um, other young people like yourself that have um, had this early um, experience in life mm -hmm. with having to deal with something as traumatic as as, as you know grave as, as cancer um, I mean it's was there any discussion or you find online groups or you can uh, um, certainly you definitely can find a lot of support groups in the community um, they actually when you go in there if you go into any kind of center they'll give you outreach programs they'll give you uh, groups mm -hmm. you can go in and and discuss it with I think I think the difference for me versus people that go into those groups is those people are actually still fighting a fight um, Whereas people that have yeah. already, and I mean, there are discussion groups for people that have like are survivors and stuff like that. Um, for me, I didn't, I didn't need anything. I didn't. I, I felt very comfortable with where I was. I knew what was going on. I, I, some people might define my approach to it as almost almost clinical, um, because I just knew what I wanted after that. I just knew where I wanted to go. I just knew that I was going to change mm -hmm. um change my body change my health and change the way that i looked at it i wasn't going to be and, and like for me i'm not going to be defined by that i now, guess is what yeah. is what i was trying to say that i wasn't going to let that experience define what i was and who i am today so if if, right. if if people met me and if people knew me and if people didn't know my story um i still want them to be inspired by my teachings and my knowledge uh, and, and, and what I have to offer. Mm -hmm. I think, I think I get what you're mm -hmm. saying um, is that the two can stand separate. Separate. Yeah. yeah. Even though like it, when you look at the reason why I've switched my journey and the reason why I really took my health into control, it all stems from that happening. Um, but the way that I choose to live mm -hmm. my life now and how yeah. I continue, yeah. um, still holds its own well as i said before i think what strikes me is it's become even more purposeful and mm -hmm. more committed and absolutely one of the terms i like these days is really laser focused yes um what so what's the uh to set up our next podcast visit um as we sit here and i want to reiterate that's Barry Samuel, uh, Inside of the Inside Out podcast. A uh, pleasure to have Allison Key, holistic nutritionist, tell us her story. Allison, so having shared some of this with us, or a big part of this with us about what you've uh, endured and experienced, um, what's a lifestyle change within the realm of healthy living, um, inspired living? What's the most fundamental message that you like to convey to people that can be of help? I mean, I think at the end of the day, um, 
the only change that you're going to make that's going to last is going to be because you realize how much yourself is worth. So you can, you can have the best intentions to go to the gym every day. You can have the best intentions to eat properly every day. You can say to everybody in the world that I'm going on a diet and I'm going to lose weight and I'm going to start exercising. But unless you actually realize how much yourself is worth to yourself, you're never going to actually create those habits. So I think the biggest thing for me was knowing that mentality shift and just realizing, you know, that this is my life. I am going to live it to the best of my ability and knowing that I'm worth it, knowing that, you know, I'm worth taking 30 minutes to meal prep rather than going out and eating fast food, knowing that I'm worth making time to do a 30 minute to an hour workout every single day rather than sitting on the couch watching TV. Knowing that those things are so important to me that I make the time to do them. Mm -hmm. Or even meditating is another... A hundred percent. Accessible. I mean, yep. we can go for a walk. We can... You know, I, you know. I, I call it personal development. So doing something for yourself mentally. Personal right? care. Personal, personal care. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, meditate, meditating, you know going for the walk, taking a relaxing bath after a stressful day, you know, really giving back to yourself and just realizing every aspect of your health and well-being comes from you understanding that you're worth it. Well, that's uh, beautifully articulated. And um, I think, you know, we, we all have experience within our, our community and our social groups that, uh, you know, we try to impress upon the people that we care about, that we love, you know, just a suggestion or a hint mm -hmm. of something that could help <laughs> them in trying to be subtle. Uh, I mean, granted, we all need to help ourselves and we all have to look mm -hmm. at ourselves. But, you know, it's it's sort of plain from the outside to sometimes see the other people. It definitely is. Uh, we, you know, and we got to be careful, um, you know, and how we handle and manage uh, making a recommendation or suggestion for mm -hmm. how, how someone could look at some of their own uh, stuff or vulnerabil vulnerabilities. Yeah. Uh, I guess what I'm getting at is that, you know, in order to, as you said, see, um, take hold of your self care um, and, and your, your, your personal care, your personal development, and, and try to grow, um, is to kind of it, be ready to. You know take ownership of the of, yeah. uh, of, of that item or that issue that area because um, a lot of times like you were pre-cancer mm -hmm. you were really busy mm -hmm. so we tend to kind of stay in that kind of spiral yeah uh, or you know windstorm and that's propelling us and we kind of know the range of that windstorm we know the intensity of it it's familiar to us and it's maybe not what's ideal but it's, it's sort we're of we're coping in. we're yeah. coping in the moment so like being willing to disrupt that to run interference yeah. on your day-to-day -day routine is is really critical for us to say i don't want to have regrets yep i'm invested in in one life um so try to make healthy choices and, and maintain the, a, an open mind to listen to what's out there and what people are saying um, to try to take it in because often, you know, it resonates on a very, sh and I don't mean this to sound, you know, arrogant, but on a shallow level, we don't let it penetrate deeply to say, oh, I need to be introspective about that and, and, well, and that, take action. That's self-actualization that it's actually something that's affecting you, right? Because people... You know, we can look at ourselves and we can look at our body image and we can look at, but maybe maybe we don't want to hear that as much as we tell ourselves we might be a bit overweight, when someone else says it to us and you realize that that outside, it, it's a lot harder to hear. It's a lot harder to deal with and it's a lot harder to Absolutely. kind of change your mind about it. So it's breaking down those, those, those when barriers. We're, when we're ready, um, and that's, that's, that's good mostly, unless you have cancer, then yeah. you don't have time. No. And, and, and sometimes you don't have time. Uh, and you lost 35 pounds. Mm -hmm. So that's also another uh, pretty remarkable thing that you did. Mm. It's, and, and that in itself has, has changed 
change my mentality, change my mood, change my physical appearance, change how I feel every day, my energy levels, like the the amazing effects that you don't even realize are possible that happen as you just start making those slight changes. And for me, like I didn't, I didn't go on a crash diet. I didn't start exercising seven days a week. I didn't go extreme. They were lifestyle changes that I made. So, I mean, you just need to start. You need to find that point where you start. And I think every day is an opportunity, you know, as the, the sun comes up, Mm -hmm. um, and we have, we're blessed with yeah. another day. A new day. It's a new day. It's a, it's a reset. It's a new start. Yep. And uh, so I think with, with that intention and that uh, inspiration, hopefully, um, mm -hmm. you know. And it's learning every day, growing every day. And if you made a mistake the day before, you learn from it today. Uh, if people want to get in touch with Allison, myself, or the Inside Out team, uh, feel free to follow up on this conversation or inquire about other ways uh, to empower yourself with tools for healthy living. And you can reach us on our website, which is insideoutstudio.ca. Uh, you can also send us an email similarly to info at insideoutstudio.ca. Um, we're also on social media on Instagram, Inside Out HF. On Facebook and, and, and the like and um, Allison thank you so much uh, thank and you, I Mary. look forward to questions uh, people um, you know asking more about absolutely. their amazing journey absolutely so, and, and I'm here to answer them and you know new holistic nutritionist questions and tips until next time thanks everyone thank you